of the baby models. Um, um, are you ready to go? Yes. I have a few social media platforms to show all of you, and most of these shouldn't be foreign to you. We have Facebook, a little past our time. X, formerly known as Twitter. TikTok, of course. Snapchat, Pinterest, it's not just for grandmas, okay? YouTube, Visco, don't be ashamed if you still have Visco, it's okay. And if you're living under a rock, this is called Instagram. I'm sure most of you have some of these apps. Is anybody brave enough to share what they think their average screen time is on social media a day? Anybody know? London? Probably like four hours, five hours. Four hours, okay. Don't be embarrassed. Actually, an article by the Gallup News published on October 13th, 2023, tells us that the average 18-year-old in the United States spends about five hours a day on social media alone. This might not sound terrible, but if you average it out, this is about 35 hours a week. And then if we dive even a little bit more deep, then that averages out to be about 1,825 hours a year. This leads to about 21% of your life spent solely on social media. That doesn't scare you yet. <laughs> All right, Isaac, come on up. This is Isaac Bates, my partner. He is an avid social media user. He has been using social media from the ripe young age of 14 years old. He's also put countless hours into researching for this project. We literally didn't count the hours. And this is Claire Hopkins. She has me beat. She has been using social media since she was 11. And she loves posting her entire life on Instagram. <laughs> Thank you, Isaac. <laughs> Now, some of you might be surprised by this last statistic I just shared. This clearly proves that young people spend a substantial amount of time on social media. Now, let's snap into some more research. As many of you are aware, and if you're not, then you're lucky they've never experienced this, but social media greatly impacts self-confidence and it can even promote comparison. As social media constantly updates and makes their platforms more interactive and innovative, the opportunity for social comparison rises. The Jet Foundation posted an article accessed on November 28th, 2023, stating that the impact of mental health trends, including depression, anxiety, and body image issues skyrocketed during the same time period that teen social media usage increased. When creating a false life for the sole purpose of likes, comments, follows, and shares, this easily highlights our struggles and shortcomings in the real life. As the lines blur between what is real and what is filtered, it makes it very difficult to determine what's fake and what's not. Many of you have heard the term FOMO. If you haven't, this stands for the fear of missing out. It can also be referred to as negative social comparison. The Jed Foundation studies also show that negative social comparison results in increased depression, decreased overall well-being, and poor body image issues. It even can result in eating disorders. While any age group can be affected by the many negative effects of social media, predominantly young adults and adolescents are impacted the most. This is because social media directly impacts our forming identities. Over the past few years, short form content has been taking over almost every media platform. This could be TikTok videos, Instagram reels, Pinterest idea pins, YouTube shorts, the list goes on. Norman Farb, a psychology professor at UMT, shares in an article published on April 2nd, 2023, that, the ability, that short form content has the ability to hold our attention for so long because of the low cognitive load. Our brains don't have to work that hard. It's easy to just to say just one more video. Short form content makes mindless scrolling almost effortless. In an interview with a UTSC professor of psychology, Steve Jordan states that oxytocin, also known as the love and trust hormone, is released when we're vulnerable with others. Social media addiction results in increased amounts of cortisol, which is the stress hormone. When we're consumed by a screen and social media, we, miss, we are missing out on basic activities like laughing, smiling, dancing, being with others that release oxytocin. 
The less time we spend on social media, the less stress we will experience. Many of us know that social media is curated to our interests and beliefs. It's a place where people come together with like-minded people. Dr. Yankin Liu shared an article published by BGSU in October 2022 that social media users are enclosed in what she calls an echo chamber. Here, they receive information that affirms their beliefs and stifens their access to other viewpoints. This can be damaging as the majority of social media users today use social media as their sole source of political and global information. And not only is this information false, but this is also extremely biased. The algorithm is curated specifically for the user. You see what you want to see. Users only see one-sided information and biased news. The list goes on and on of all the negative effects social media has on us. And fortunately, all of us are mostly already aware of these effects, but we continue to choose to expose ourselves to such a detrimental thing. But let's put a Pinterest in that thought and invite Isaac back up. Thank you. My proposal for the plan to eliminate these harmful effects that social media causes is the only one I can really see, which is for us all to stop using it. As Robinson Smith said in an article posted on healthguide.org on March 29th, 2023, multiple studies have found a strong link between heavy social media and increased risk of, for depression, anxiety, loneliness, self-harm, and even suicidal thoughts. These are all very negative things that will affect our communities. This plan is the only way that I can see to alleviate some of these issues. The plan for diminishing these harmful side effects of social media would only work through enforcing and showing people the way that social media negatively impacts them and their communities. Although people can argue that social media is a good thing for people because it helps them connect with others over large distances, I believe that this is a valid argument, but the thing is, there are many other ways to do that, such as text messaging, calling others, and many other options. This increased use of social media also creates a disconnect where no one is really going out and talking to people face to face anymore. But I believe even if these other methods of communication over long distances didn't exist, social, the negative aspects of social media would still outweigh the positive aspects. Now that I've introduced you to our plan to release, the so to release society from the clutches of social media, let's take a look at what this would really look like. If this plan is adopted, we can make an effort to stop using social media and allow for more face-to-face -face interaction. This will greatly increase our community's mental health and increase the productivity of our workforce because people won't be trying to sneak off into a corner and watch a few videos on their phone instead of doing their jobs. Although if we don't adopt this plan, it will continue spiraling downward. Currently, let's take an average look, a look at an average person, young person's time spent on a day-to-day -day basis. There will be roughly eight hours for sleeping, eight hours for working or school, two hours for eating and cooking that food, one hour for commuting to and from their work or school, and those five hours that are spent on social media. This fills out all 24 hours of your day, leaving no time for any positively impactful things in your life, like physical activity or real personal interactions with people.
this graph is a really stark demonstration of how fast these social media outlets are growing. This shows the trend of people using social media is rapidly increasing. So if we do not do anything to limit our use of social media, this will continue to spiral out of control. This is shown in what Ortiz, Ospina, and Roser said in an article on Our World in Data, published November 23rd, that this skyrocket seen in the last few years will only increase as more social media outlets come out and they become more and more addictive. This trend will continue to the point where <coughs> no one will be able to go more than five seconds without this constant effortless stimulation that social media provides. In my experience, these short form videos also have a detrimental impact on my attention span. It, because of this effortless stimulation that they provide, I am found getting uninterested way faster than I would have before in schoolwork, in lectures, or anything that I feel that I need to do, but isn't in the short video format that, the, that is coming out these days. <coughs> now that you understand what the world could be like if we do or do not follow this plan, let's biz go and explore what you can do. Obviously, ideally, everyone would stop using social media altogether. But this is an unreasonable ask. There will be no time in the near future that everyone will just drop social media altogether unless the government bans it, which I don't see happening. That's why I propose that everyone sets a time limit on their phones for their social media apps. Even something as like two hours for all of your social media platforms would cause you to be more mindful about how you're spending your time on these social media outlets and decrease the amount of time people spend mindlessly scrolling on social media outlets. This is, the social media is one of the biggest time wasters that is available to the public today. This is due to the addictive nature that is embedded in every social media platform. The only way for this to stop is for us to not give all of these companies our time spending on their apps. Together, we can work towards creating a future that isn't controlled by our addiction to social media. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. What's your, what's each of yours favorite social media app? I would say my favorite right now is probably TikTok because I send videos back and forth with my girlfriend with our long distance relationship? I would say Instagram, unfortunately. <laughs> London. How much time do you guys spend on social media? Over the past time? week, we actually set a time limit on our phones for two hours for all of our I social media. I did an hour, but. Yeah. <laughs> I did two hours because of my long distance relationship, so I could still interact with my girlfriend over TikTok a little bit. But I do have to say, set, setting a time limit is really good, but also you can get apps where you have to like type in a code to like make it harder, or whatever. If you don't get those apps though and you set it like in your settings, it just says like screen time, like screen time done for today. You can just easily click ignore. So I would recommend getting an app because sometimes it's hard to hold yourself accountable. <laughs> yes. Do you think you'll continue doing your time restraints on social media? I think I will. Let me try to. <laughs> yes. What are you doing with all that free time? I'm actually spending more time outdoors and I'm, I've been using my lacrosse stick a lot more often and just practicing sports. 
I've been walking my dogs a lot more and actually reading, so that's cool. Nice. <laughs> yes. How do you guys feel about video games? I think video games are a good way to escape reality. Obviously, if you overuse them, it will be the same problem as social media. But I feel like with video games, there is more of a barrier to entry due to the fact that you actually have to go and like get on a game console and load into the game. Obviously, once you're on that game, it is so easy to spend an entire day just on that game. But because of the fact that you can't just like lay down, get on your phone and just mindlessly scroll on social media, I think that it is a much healthier way to do a little bit of time wasting. I would agree with what Isaac is saying. It is harder to, it's not, you don't have access to it everywhere you go all day. Um, I'm, I don't, I'm not a gamer, unless it's Wii Sports. So I think <laughs> like if you're spending, I think with anything, if you're spending like a substantial amount of time on it and it's like taking away from other important things, then that's probably not good. But yeah. Yeah. Have you guys noticed like the algorithm on your phones comparing themselves to what you want? Yes. Have you guys ever had where you like, you have a conversation with somebody, you talk about something, and then like you get all these ads or all these things pop up, like it's kind of creepy. I don't know. That's just like one example of how it's like exactly, it's literally giving you exactly what you want to see and what you want to hear. I actually experimented with this over COVID because I was stuck in this constant feedback loop of being in Bellingham and hearing all of the opinions that people of Bellingham normally possess. I used one of my social media outlets over COVID and interacted with only the opposing viewpoints so I could kind of see what every, the other people were thinking in this country. Anything else? Well, thank you guys. <laughs>